guys can be here this morning. And uh, I think it's probably the first time they'll hear me preach. Uh, I hope it's not the last, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, uh, this morning, uh, we had a good Sunday school class. Uh, we talked about Acts chapter 4. We talked about how Peter and John boldly spoke uh, to the Sanhedrin and, and, uh, and everything about the Lord Jesus Christ and what they had done to him. And uh, whenever they healed uh, the uh, lame man that sat at the uh, at Solomon's Gate or the Gate of Be uh, called Beautiful for uh, over 40 years. And then when uh, Peter and John came there, uh, um, the... Uh, beggar that was uh, lame had uh, asked something of them and usually it was uh, alms or whatever and uh, Peter and John said look we don't have any money but what we do have we can give you and that should be our attitude too you know uh, I know uh, it wasn't too long ago Mary and I didn't have much money on us and uh, you know we saw a young couple on the side of the road and we gave what we had and the lady was like hey uh, you know, we greatly appreciated it, and you can see it in her face, you know. Uh, but this uh, man of over 40 years, you know, uh, uh, his faith is what healed him in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, and uh, so, uh, again, we're having some good uh, Wednesday night Bible studies as well. So if you guys uh, want to join us on Wednesday nights, we're talking about the Holy Ghost. Uh, well, this morning, I want to talk about a story... Um, that uh, I know you all, you guys all know, uh, is the story of Matthew. So we're going to be in Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 through 22. 16 through 22. Matthew chapter 19, 16 through 22. And I'm going to start reading there. And it says, uh, we're talking about this uh, rich young ruler. And uh, again, I want to uh, say also that in several other accounts, uh, this uh, he was called a, uh, a rich young ruler. Um, I think it was in uh, Mark and in Luke, uh, where it has a, a speaking of the same account. Um, Mark chapter 10, verse 17 through 27, and Luke chapter 18, uh, verses 18 through 27 is where you'll find that. Uh, but starting right here in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, it says, Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall not shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? The young man said to him, All these things, I'm sorry, uh, 21, Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning, Lord, and with humble hearts, Lord, we ask that you would just open our hearts and our minds, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would just use me as a vessel, Lord, and uh, allow me to preach the word that only you would want them to hear. Lord, I ask that you would just make them, uh, allow them to, to open up their hearts so that they might hear it. And again, as Brother Billy mentioned, uh, go out amongst the hedges and tell their testimony and preach this word uh, boldly and firmly like uh, we know that Peter and John did. Yes, sir. And Lord, we ask that you would just be with all those that are on our prayer list. Lord, we ask you to be with Brother Ralph as he goes through all this uh, treatment. Lord, we know that he's having some issues, but we ask that you would just uh, help keep him strong, Lord, and help him heal and get rid of this cancer. And Lord, we ask that uh, we praise you for the blessing that uh, uh, we had with Eva, Lord, that, uh, that the doctors were able to get off her cancer and get it out. And Lord, we ask that you would just help her with her healing process as well. 
Lord, we ask you to be with those that couldn't be here today, Lord. Uh, put them under conviction that they might uh, get up out of that bed and come yes, uh, and hear your word, Lord, so that they might stand firm when it comes time for the for you to come back, Lord. Yes, and Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Again, I think uh, a lot of us have uh, have uh, heard this story of this young, uh, young rich uh, ruler. And uh, notice right there in the very first verse is right there, well, in 16, it says, Now behold, one came and said to him, uh, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? What a great question. Right? What a great question. And I, I'm telling you right now, as a pastor, I would like more people to come up to me and ask me that question. Amen. You know, hey, what, right. what do I need to do to get what you got? You know? And uh, I tell you right now, the way I like to talk, <laughs> Brother Rick can tell you, you know, that they, would, they would not leave uh, not filled with the Holy Spirit and being convicted. You know? But I know that this guy was being convicted, right? And the reason why I know this is because he seen Jesus out. He came right up to him, and nine times out of ten, he probably laid prostate down in, in front of him and said, good teacher. And we know that he knew that the Lord probably had an answer for him because he called him a teacher, right? And he called him good, but then what does, uh, what does Jesus say to him? Jesus has not denied his deity here, uh, but he is saying, you know, what, what do you, you know, why do you call me good? There's only one good. One good, and that's God. Amen. You know? And to me, that's saying that this young man probably knew that he was in uh, uh, in the, in the uh, what do you call it, with the Lord Jesus Christ, in the presence. That's right. that's right, in the presence of God. But he asked the right questions, didn't he? He, did, he, had, he asked the right questions in verse 16. Now, how many times, a uh, show of hands of us parents, They've been driving on a vacation or whatever, and you get those questions from the back, at the back seat going, are we there yet? How many more miles before we get to a gas station? I gotta go to the bathroom. You know? Questions like that, right? Uh, we get those questions, you know, are we there yet? You know, uh, uh, we've had uh, questions like, you know, uh, again, how many more miles do we have to go? But the most important question that we can ask is the one that this rich young ruler asked in verse 16 where he says, Now behold, uh, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? But we know that there's one thing wrong with this question. Can't do anything for eternal life. Now, the only thing you can do, I take it back, the only thing you can do is accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior through Amen. faith. That's right. Through Amen. faith. Amen. Amen. It says, uh, and he asked the right person too, did he? Mm -hmm. He asked the right person. In verse 17, it says, so he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, and that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. We know here that he called Jesus the good teacher, and he said this is not necessarily a recognition of Christ's deity, but the young man simply meant that Christ was righteous and a teacher from God who apparently had eternal life and might be able to let him know how he could get it. That's what people should see in us as Christians. The Bible tells us Amen. that when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, we are baptized and we are uh, down with the old, up with the new, we are a new right. creature. And that those non-believers should be able to see Christ Amen. in our actions. Amen. That's right. Amen. By the way we talk, by the way we carry ourselves, examples, and again, I always bring it up about Tom when he was out in the oil fields. I love that example of when that guy saw that Bible of Tom's dash and said, I didn't know you were a Christian. What a wake up call. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but that would wake me up. That would let me know that, hey, 
Even though I'm saying I'm a Christian, even though I'm coming to church on Sundays, even though I'm going to Bible study on Wednesdays, if someone tells me I did not know you were a Christian, that means, guess what? I'm on the wrong path. I need to, I need to direct my path and I need to get in, personally get in contact with the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, what do you want to do with me? Man, that's right. Yeah. Because I am here to serve you mm -hmm. and to give you glory. That's right. This young man knew he was under conviction. He knew as he saw Jesus walking down the road, he knew that this person was the one that could give him an answer on how to get eternal right. life. He saw this example. He knew this person had eternal life. And so he fell at Jesus' feet and said, hey, stop. I need to know this. I want to know this now. Now it's important that we know that these commandments that Jesus threw out to him were not all the commandments. Okay? They weren't all the commandments. And most of uh, these commandments that he put out were all the human aspects. Okay? Verse, uh, where he says, if you want to enter uh, life, keep the commandments. It says, this of course is law, not gospel, but uh, before showing him the way to life, Jesus wanted to impress on the young man that both the high standard required by God and the absolute futility of seeking salvation by his own merit. In other words, you can't do it. Right. You cannot obey the Ten Commandments and make it to right. heaven on your own. That's right. Impossible. Right. The Bible tells us it's by faith, not of works. That's right. That any man shall boast, right? That's right. All these questions that we have. How do I get how do I, I get what you have? How do I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior? What happened to you that turned you from being the way you were into what you are now? Because I want some of that. He asked the right questions mm -hmm. and he asked the right person. That's right. Notice in verse 20 where it says, The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? So this man is telling the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm a righteous man. I go to church. I go to the synagogues. I pray. I do this. I do that. But he knew he was lacking something. What was it? It was that personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And it was putting him under so much conviction that he was seeking out the Lord to give him an answer on how he could get eternal life. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I've gone, when I've come to church or Wednesday night Bible study, I remember back when my uh, schedule got caught so much up in the work and the things that were going on in my, in my life that I wasn't able to come to church or come to Wednesday night Bible studies. I don't know about you guys, but I felt that disconnect. And when I come to church on uh, Sunday mornings and then I go on Wednesday nights, Guess what? By the time I leave here today, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to Wednesday night. Man. Man. Right. And from the time that I leave here today until 7 o'clock on Wednesday night, I'm trying my best. Just like Paul said, I'm trying to serve the Lord better today than I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Man. Man. I want people to see Christ in me. That's right. Just like that young ruler saw Christ.
stripes walking down the road. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> but you notice this young ruler, he was a righteous man. Now we don't know if he was a ruler of the synagogues or if he was a, a ruler over some economic stuff. All we know is that he was a ruler. And he was young. So he had, and it says that he had a lot of possessions, right? Lots of possessions. So this, this person was well off. He was well off. And we see that still today. There is a lot of people that are well off. There's going to be those that, you know, they have a bigger house. Or it doesn't mean that they haven't worked for it. That's just God's will for them. But I guarantee you, mm -hmm. their cross that they're carrying That's right. may be larger than the one you're carrying. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us it's harder for a rich man to get to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. In verse 20 it says, The young man said to him, All these things I have kept. <coughs> Excuse me, this statement probably sounds... Uh, absolutely ridiculous to the most of uh, most of us. It says, how in the world can this man profess that he kept all these commandments? It seems quite a bold statement to say that all these things he has kept. You know, but uh, you sit there and he says, Jesus said you shall not commit murder. Now, I don't believe there's Anybody in this room right here that's ever committed murder? You know? It says, uh, verse 18, you shall not commit murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear with false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall not. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And this young man has said, "Well, what else do I lack? I've done that since my youth." Mm -hmm. But again, he felt that disconnect, right? He felt that this, even though he was a righteous man and he went to church and he had kept right. the, the commandments as best he could, he still felt that disconnect. Mm -hmm. And I know to this day there's people out here in these pews that are feeling the same way. You're trying your best day after day after day. But guess what? Life's not easy. The Bible says that we wrestle against what? Principality, the darkness that we don't see. It's a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. May not be a physical battle for some of you, but it's a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. it says verse 20, he said that what am I still lacking? It says in all honesty, all these things I have kept. <clears throat> it says, yet he felt like there was something missing. And I know that we feel that way today. The Lord says what? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, <clears throat> go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, and come follow me. Wow. I don't know about you, but if I was the young ruler and everything, I probably would have had the same... Uh, look on my face now. What? What, what, what would you say? I got to go and sell everything to follow you. You see, in this passage, it tells us that Jesus is telling him that, guess what? Lay not up your treasures on sure. earth, but in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. So we see right. here that the young ruler. As you read further down, he turned and went away. The next verse says, But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, <coughs> and for he had great possessions. A lot of times we see people, they're focused on the external things. 
Same thing this young ruler was. He was focused on the external things, his possessions, things that he had. He had wealth beyond compare. He was young. He was rich. He had land. He had money. More than likely, there were a lot of people that knew him in the church. That he, so he had prestige. And the only thing that he could think of at that moment in his life was, what are they going to think about me when I do this? When I become not rich. But what he was an understanding was, all the riches in the world, he can't take with him. To heaven. Amen. Amen. That's right. He couldn't take with him to heaven, right? That's right. He was trying to find out how to, how to get into heaven and how to what he had to do for eternal life. And Jesus gave him the answer. Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. To me, Jesus just exposed his very sin right there to his face. Notice that Jesus didn't beat around the bush. He didn't beat around the bush. He said, I tell you what you do. You want to be perfect? You go sell that. You go sell this. You give to the poor. You take everything that you have and get rid of it all and come follow me. And your treasures will be in heaven. In other words, what he's telling him is you will have eternal life. He's sitting there telling that young ruler, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. None come unto the Father but by me. He's telling him, this is what you need to do. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus made it clear also no one can serve two masters, right? No one can serve two masters. Do you think that's what this young ruler was trying to do? Yeah, he was saying, you know, hey, I go to church. Everybody knows me in the synagogues. I'm a well-known man. But if I do all this, what are they going to think about me? Jesus was trying to tell him none of that mattered. None of that matters. You see, none of that matters if you if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. The house that you live in, the car that you have, mm -hmm. the job that you have. Sure. Guess what? The Bible tells us we'll take we'll take a breath when we first mourn, and then we're gonna die, right? I think it's Psalms. It's in Psalms. But here's the deal. When I pass away, there's going to be two dates. Two dates on my tombstone. One will say October 28, 1967. And the other one will say the day that I passed away. But between those two dates, it will have a dash. What you do, or what I have done since October 28, 1967, what I have done on that dash is what matters. Mm -hmm. Did I do the right things? Did I tell people about God? Did I tell them about what the Lord done for me? Have I set the examples for others? You took your first breath and you'll take your last one. Mm -hmm. We know that <clears throat> he asked all the right questions. He asked 
the right person. And he received the right answer. He was a righteous man. He felt the right conviction. And we know that Jesus exposed the right sin. Are there sins out there that you're doing as a Christian that need to be exposed? Are you asking the right questions? Are you giving the right answers? Are you on put is the Holy Spirit putting you under conviction? And if He is, are you answering the call? These are all questions that we all have. Just like those questions that we heard from the back seat. Are we there yet? When are we going to eat? We all have questions. One day, when we stand before God, they will all be answered. That's right. They'll all be answered. But remember, this young ruler, he had it all, but he failed. Mm-hmm. He failed. Yeah. Because he couldn't, through, he couldn't see through his sin mm-hmm. yeah. and realize that the way to heaven was through the Lord Jesus Christ, not Amen. through his possessions. Amen. Don't get so caught up in the world. My dad gave me some advice that I'll never forget before his passing. He told me, he says, don't always get so busy making a living that you forget to have a life. Your life as a Christian should emulate Christ's life on this earth. We should be telling others that don't know Christ about Christ. We should be telling others that don't know Christ what Christ did for us. Billy stated it this morning. Our testimony is one of the biggest uh, offenses we have. Go on the offense. We know that in Ephesians 6, it doesn't have anything to do with a back plate. We have a breastplate, but we don't have a back plate. If the devil's going to throw those uh, fiery darts at you, let them hit you in the chest. I guarantee you, with God's armor and angle on earth, and He gives you the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. so that whenever something like that happens and you've heard the Word of God and you've hid it away in your heart, He will draw it out so that you can defend yourself. I guarantee it. Amen. Stand firm for Christ. Mm-hmm. Remember this young ruler. Now we're going to have a hymn of invitation this morning. Uh, I want everybody to rise and just remember the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. None cometh through the Father except or by me. So if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, then guess what? Today is the day. Do not hesitate because tomorrow is not promised. Amen. We'll turn in our hymnals to page 307. 307. And although uh, I am actually, let's do 305, 305. Right? And uh, even though I'm uh, leading the music, you guys come down here and then uh, we will uh, continue to sing. And I'll pray for you if you need prayer for. Uh, I want everybody to know that uh, I'm glad that everybody came this morning and uh, just go out amongst the hedges and spread God's word. Be that light up on a hill. Hymnal 305, Hymnal 305, I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. On three. One, two, three. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Thank you for this time that we could come into this your house.
so that we can hear your word in song and in teaching and in preaching. Yes, Father, I ask that you be with our prayer request. You know what each and every one means. Yes, Father, please be with this country in this upcoming election. Yes, and let, me, let us get the right people in to uh, run this country the way it should be ran and to, to follow you. Yes, Father, I ask that you be with this church, be with our congregation, be with yes, the ones that are not here for whatever reason they may be. Just bless them and be with them. Be with Sir. us as we go our separate ways and see us back here at the appointed time and place. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.